this week in our collective heads Wanna put an old rumor to bed Stereotype that you've all heard How we're all just angry video game nerds Most of us have actual jobs Kids and families and cats and dogs, yeah This week in our collective heads This week in our collective heads Welcome to This Week in Our Collective Heads. I'm Kevin. I'm Patrick. And we're going through the the very limited news. Uh, the week after E3 is, is usually pretty, like, slow. Yeah. And um, w- we we have entirely sub-quests here. There's there's not really a main topic that we could find. There's there's not really anything to, to expound on. Yeah. Uh, so we're just going to kind of run through, and we'll probably end up vamping on something. Yeah. So... Hang out with us and, and let us know in the in the chat live on Twitch uh, what you think about that. Yeah. And if you're if you're viewing this later or listening to it later, then put something in the comments and let us know what you think. I think our topic should be how uh, corporate dress code is sexist in favoring women's ability to wear more varied uh, garments than men. I would absolutely debate you on that because um, as far as women's clothing, mm-hmm. they're the dress code for men mm-hmm. is understood. You like you yeah. know what business casual is. You know if a shirt or pants or whatever is business casual. Sure. There's a level of subjectivity mm-hmm. when it comes to women, mm-hmm. and they don't. Some women are allowed to do things. Some women are not, and so there there is an added level of difficulty mm-hmm. in figuring out is this shirt appropriate or am I going to get in trouble? Mm-hmm. And it's. It's, Walmart it's, flip flops and a tank top and a sheer, um, actually a bra and a sheer top that you can see through. Is that appropriate? Not for you. Not not for me. No. But but that falls in line with what's appropriate in a lot of cor- corporate dress codes. Even okay. if you can see half the underwear and the uh, sandals are uh, flip flop, two dollar plastic, uh, throwaway gym sandals. Well, see, I don't really like flip flops. Well, I don't either, but they're like, oh, okay, these are dress see, shoes because there's just, a slight glitter on them. And see, the thing is that, like, you see that one way. My my counterpoint mm-hmm. is that, yeah, but in another situation, that's not allowed. Or yeah. there's, there's a situation where somebody's wearing something that is work appropriate, but somebody's like, well, yeah, but you know, you're distracting the student, particularly, particularly in educational. Oh, sure, sure. I'm talking corporate. I'm talking corporate. Like, okay, it's okay. Like you're not interacting. You're, you're just all in, a, all, all in an office, and everyone's working. Okay. And you have a specific dress code, even though you have no interaction with, with children or outside entities. See, I think if you're having no interaction with outside mm-hmm. entities, you should be able to come to work naked. Uh, well, I don't know about naked, but I would say you've got the freedom to wear whatever you want that that, that is not, um, you know, revealing of areas. I don't know. I think I think America is, like, too hard up on nudity. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I should be able to wear this at work. Well, I just said you could wear up to nothing, so clearly you're not going to get an but, argument from but with, me. But with, like, shorts and this, like, if I showed up at work like this, they'd be like, okay, seriously, what's going on? You need, you need to go home and dress. No one ever sees me other than the people I work with. And all we're doing is, is like, you know, <laughs> is technical work. I'm, you know, well, I, I am up off my desk a lot. But um, the fact that... Our, our dress code and a lot of other companies that I've been to and and seen people at where it's like oh you're business casual which means men are wearing uh, polo or button down shirts and you, you may be able to wear jeans but usually that means that means uh, dockers uh, closed toed dress shoes uh, is is that that's the three you have to wear and then for women it's um, meh. And then, so the women wear like like tank tops that say the the, the pink like workout tank tops. Okay. Um, which I don't have a problem with, but it's like if they can't if they can wear that. Why can't I wear a workout tank top? Because they're literally wearing like yoga pants and and a see through a see through what are they called tops. I don't know. I don't know. One of the things it's not a shirt, but it's a shirt. It's like a throw thing. It's not really a shirt. And then a tank top. That is that is a workout tank top, mm-hmm. or yeah, and or I'm like that doesn't make sense. That's why can't I wear that? 
shouldn't I don't they know. shouldn't they be wearing well, see, dresses, button down shirts, whatever at the same level? Yeah. See, so uh, we're kind of approaching the same issue from different angles, mm-hmm. and my my. My issue is with the subjectivity and the the ability for somebody who who doesn't like it sure. to decide. Uh, less so with business casual. I yeah. think business casual is a fairly well defined thing yeah. that should be that should be uh, adhered to. Yeah, but if you're just saying but, work appropriate, then right? And, and, and that that there's there's a level of subjectivity yeah. that that's weird and awkward. I agree. Um, speaking of weird and awkward, so Project Rap Rabbit. Back to video games. <laughs> um, it's we didn't think it was going to be able to to meet its goal, and it it just really didn't. Yeah, like very much didn't. It didn't, which is which is really sad because um, is it? I I think it's sad. I mean, I liked I liked this. Um, I liked Parappa Parappa the Rapper. I thought that it was nice to see something in that vein coming out. Um, I think that their goals were were not astronomical either. Uh, for eight hundred grand for a for a video game, yeah, is not insane. But I, I feel like one of the big things about this is mm-hmm. that um, this this was kind of early in in the yeah. rhythm game genre, and I feel like in a lot of ways it's it's kind of moved on. Like yeah. uh, last year, last year two years ago, whenever they they had the the new Guitar Hero and the new rock band whatever yeah. and people went yeah I remember that <laughs> we don't do that anymore and it's it's I, I feel like this is kind of the same thing the 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 market as a whole has kind of moved mm-hmm. on and Parappa the Rapper is available on your PS4 it right is. now it is and it's good it's really good so <laughs> you can you can get it through Parappa the Rapper I mean I but you so, you would have liked to have like new songs new story sure. new yeah but to play devil's advocate with myself um, because I like to play with myself. It, I, I think this is a great example of Kickstarter showing that if you have if you have a game or an idea, that some sometimes they completely hit everyone and it, it resonates with everyone, yeah. and sometimes it doesn't resonate with as many people as you think it will. And I think this is a great like you were, like yeah. you were saying the market has moved on and it didn't resonate with as many people as they thought. So yeah. they they hit a hundred and uh, things are around one hundred and fifty grand of their two hundred uh, the eight hundred uh, yeah. and some change uh, uh, goal. So so they they they've said they're going to keep working on it and trying to figure out if there's a way to to release it. Yeah. But I really don't see that likely. Um, but moving on to to happier news, uh, we talked last week about uh, IO Interactive reclaiming the rights to Hitman. Yeah. And so their first act as as part of that is um, they're like, hey, so uh, everybody want to play Hitman? <laughs> so the the they've released the first level for free. Yeah. And but I think it's, I think that's great. Uh, yeah. Especially with this, this was the uh, episodic. Uh, the, this one was given out more like Telltale episodic, you know, uh, style. So giving out the first one for free to let people get a taste of this and see is this something that you like? Uh, yeah. There, there are people who who skipped it based on the business model. We're we're in a very business savvy uh, time for uh, your. Uh, I wouldn't say hardcore gamers, but a lot of gamers are tapped in. I mm-hmm. mean, people who are listening to this, obviously, you're tapped in because you're listening to us. But, yeah. but you know, when people see a certain business model, they see microtransactions or they see whatever. They may or may not want to go with a product based on that. It could be yeah, an IP that they love, but yeah, yeah. So I, I, I also really like the that uh, having having gotten out from under uh, Square Enix, mm-hmm. they're like, hey. Try our game, and and like we've we've talked a number of times about how the one of the best ways to to promote yourself mm-hmm. and promote your game yeah. is is to push forward and be like, try it, yeah, see if you like it. If you like it, buy it. Yeah, and it that's that is Overwatch. It worked with Neo. Mm-hmm. It's worked with so many games that so many games that you can't you can't get everything out of in a weekend. Yeah, and um, as much as I'd like a Call of Duty to do this. When they do it, it's the you can only play for an hour. Crap. So yeah. it's unfortunate. Um, yeah. Speaking of Call of Duty, though, uh, Modern Warfare. Yes. Is uh, so Modern Warfare is going to be released standalone for PlayStation. Right. Um, um, which I'm I'm happy about, but I'm not happy with the price. Honestly, I mean I know it's a remaster, but yeah. for forty dollars is still a bit steep. Um, 
I think at 30, I think that this would be uh, a lot more people would purchase it. Absolutely. Like, I don't think, I think it's worth more than $20, but I think at $30, uh, a lot of people would grab it. You'd have more, uh, you know, the it's, it's all about velocity of money. You'd have more people go out and grab it. Therefore, yeah. you would make more money uh, at that at that price mark. So... I think I think it's a great game. I wish that it was a little more less expensive, but um, then again, I think that all of the Call of Duty games should be less expensive. I, I, I still want that whole single player oh, yeah. twenty dollar yeah. thing. That's 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 mine. We we've said it before. If you if you haven't uh, listened to the show or watched the show before, but um, Call of Duty has some great single player campaigns, and the multiplayer is is is, is wonderful and everything, but. If they released a twenty dollar single player campaign mm-hmm. every single year, yeah, I buy that every year. I would buy it every single year, and this is money you're not getting that you'd be yeah, able because, to get because we don't we don't we don't <laughs> buy the sixty dollars. We don't we no. don't even rent them. I, I yeah I rent I've rented every now and then. I've stopped rent. I'll probably rent it later this year when whatever next one comes out. But if you gave it to me for twenty dollars, I would buy it. I would play it, and you would have. I mean. You'd have more people possibly who, if they enjoyed the single player campaign, may go, "I want to see what that weapon's like," or "I like this facility," yeah. or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. like, um, the, I mean, a lot of these uh, they're not exactly the same because Call of Duty is, has expanded from this. But back in back in my day, you'd play like the single player campaign, and then if you played multiplayer, it was like a map of part of the single player, like the Golden yeah. Eye facility, as you know, and, and in different yeah, areas. At, at, at the very least, a version of yeah. it, and that yeah. was that was fun. And to, to to be able to to get that uh, those mechanics and the feel and the weapons and to go, you know, I'm really liking this and I'm done with the story or maybe you're halfway through the story and you go, I want to I want to go with a crew and and you know and, and try this yeah. out. You'd be able to do that and then you got a little option in your in your menu. It's like, oh, do you want them? Do you want the multiplayer? Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, not so hard. There 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 are business models that I think yeah. would would work better than what they're doing now. Yeah. So I completely yeah. agree. Um, speaking of working better, uh-huh. like that segue. Uh. So uh, they they uh, updated the firmware on the Switch up to version three. three. Yeah, three point oh. Yeah, and uh, one of the more significant updates that, that I read a lot of it is you know stability and we're gonna tweak it and make it faster, whatever. Yeah. But like one of the things that you can do now is you can uh, you can make your your Joy Cons vibrate wherever. It's- Wherever they happen to be, like if you if you lose them, yeah. if they're in the couch cushions. Or it's whatever. only a single pulse. Don't get too excited about that. It's not a you can't change. The You'd have to just keep pushing it over, over and over again. There's there's just way better ways <laughs> there's a to lot handle ways. that particular and, le- and less expensive because those things are like fifty bucks per and seventy five. Right, but if you already have them, if you already have them, I guess. Uh, one th- one thing that uh, I like about this, I mean, obviously being able to do that, uh, it. It only really applies if you have a pro controller or if you have other Joy Cons. Because if you've got, if you lost one but not the other, I don't know how the navigation. I got to test this, but how the navigation okay. through, because that other Joy Con has to still be synced and have juice, obviously. Right. So if you left, if you left your Joy Con somewhere, you can plug in. Most people I've seen plug in a pro controller use other Joy Cons. Hmm. But if you're using one other Joy Con, you have to tell the 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 switch is thinking that you're going to be using it two hand like this. Okay. So I'm curious how you're supposed to how you navigate through the menus with one if you've lost one and not the other. Well, you would just do the touch screen, right? Like it would be it would be on the home page or whatever. Shut up. Solved it. I'm <laughs> Most people that I've seen like plug in pro controllers or something, but I think that's because a lot of people, um, I guess if you're in this environment, it's docked, but yeah. you kind of have to break it, which I just had that moment for me. I, it's docked, and my mind immediately thinks this is a traditional console. You know, it's, it's not, but it is. So when it's yeah. docked, if I undock it, it's still running everything the mm-hmm. same. So yeah, the touch screen should work at that point. I don't know why I didn't think about that, but because um, we're tired, we are tired, very tired, but uh, still, still here. You know? Yeah. Uh, but I, I like that aspect. I also like you can search for people if they were on your friends list for 3DS or Wii. Yeah. And that's really cool if they have a Switch. Well, especially considering how much of a pain it was to use friend codes back in the day like they sh- you should be continuing to get returns from that yes because if you're if you're going to put in like a 16, 16 16 unit code i mean come on we already have unique identifiers now 
Yeah, we have unique identifiers that you have to grab because someone else will. I mean, other than that, yeah. There's there's no reason to have a unique identifier. If you if you're doing everything based on friend code, then everyone should be able to call whatever name they want, which is confusing if you have like Mario, Jumpman, Mario. twenty Steves. Well, I was just thinking like if you're if you create a profile on your on, on a uh, console that is not going to connect to uh, online, mm-hmm. usually people just put in their name, right? And then other people in the household may put in their name as well. Yeah, um, you know, like my my nephew was like, I want to do Braden O seven or whatever. Like that's what he wanted his his name to be. And I'm like, that's not that's not going to happen. Someone's probably got that, and he didn't understand that. So. If Nintendo just used friend codes and you could do whatever name you wanted, you'd have like a ton of those generic or just yeah. Steve or Kyle or whatever. So you, so you just have an issue with too many Steves. Too many Steves. Yeah. Too many. That's Steves. Rough. It just gets confusing. I want a unique. I want a unique presence. Like I have a unique. If that's I log in, if I log in, you know it's me. But yeah. yeah, that's. I think that's important. It is important. And do away with friend codes. There's no point in it. Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't get that. Speaking of doing away with things, uh, so <laughs> Take-Two uh, has, has shut down uh, a, a GTA 5 mod called Open GTA 4. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're, they're making all of the... Uh, they're making basically... All, all the money that went to that go to, to proceeds to charity and all. And... Um, it, it, this apparently I haven't I haven't used the mod, but apparently it's it's a cheating tool uh, for GTA Five because when I read it I thought oh maybe it's a mod that like does GTA Four with GTA Five's like engine right which it's not but it's it's not and and the modding community is mm-hmm. I feel a big part of the reason that GTA Five continues to sell and yeah. like and they've 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 been very much on the hey if it's single player you you do what you're gonna do. Yeah, it, it, and I don't I, I don't entirely understand uh, why why they came down so hard on this one, but uh, yeah, we were, we were not really able to figure out exactly why. But I, this this yeah. was one of the the most popular mods, and it had been around for ever. Yeah, it's it's surprising to me, like you said, it's it's single player. Um, that's like Bethesda trying to shut down stuff for Fallout Four because there's a ton of like like within a week yeah. there was a mod for Fallout Four that when you shoot a rocket launcher it yells John Cena. So every single time you shoot it, and it's that's hilarious. My, my favorite was the Rowdy Roddy Piper <laughs> Death Claws. Yeah, those were great. <laughs> all 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 Death Claws as Rowdy, as Rowdy, Rowdy, Rowdy Piper. Piper. Yeah, <laughs> I I I don't see how messing with and breaking and playing with a single player campaign matters because all your single player stuff, if you switch over to multiplayer, none of it matters. You yeah. don't have any. You don't have any of the cars. You don't have any of the properties, yeah. money, and and like. You know, once you once you've bought the game, they they have their money. Like they're 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 they're, they're done, right? They, they have their money, but unfortunately, they still own the rights to the property. Right. But what I'm what I'm saying is that I don't I don't see the advantage for them. Oh, no. Of of interfering with how people chose to play the game, unless you were, unless you were doing something that that affects the community itself. Right but to me, I don't. And see this, this was just kind of an open, yeah, open thing. It's like, hey, go, go, have fun and blow stuff up. Yeah, if I, what if GTA I wanna, Five is about. If I want to turn all the cars into into Rick and Morty cars, which mm-hmm. is a, like there's a Rick and Morty mod. Yeah, and like and who doesn't? Who doesn't? Like, there's so many fun things you can do, and it's not, it's not what the game developers designed, sure, but it's playing with this environment, and playing with this game, in a different way. Yeah, and I think there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, Sky- Skyrim is a great example of that as well. You can break w- even without mods. You can do things that you were not supposed to do. Uh, yeah. Alex and I were talking about how if you spec a certain way, then uh, I think it's en- enchanting, conjuration, uh, and you spec that way, you can wear uh, heavy armor, use bows and giant like great swords, and mm-hmm. and your magic, and you've never. Yeah put skills into like any of that and you can one shot everything in the game and that's without even a mod that's it's just funny. milking the system yeah nothing yeah. wrong with that I mean it's not how I play Skyrim but some people want to do that some people want to have fun so uh-huh. I don't like having fun um, so if you, if you wanted to have fun in Detroit yes with with uh, yeah 
the you're, game. You're, you're gonna be you're gonna be waiting for a bit. <laughs> yeah, the game that is. You could go to Detroit and have fun, but uh, we're talking about the the, the Detroit game. So uh, it's being delayed till uh, 2018. Um, again, with all these delays, you know, people can get really disappointed uh, about them, but. I don't know what you know, where exactly, why exactly they're 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 pushing it out. But if, I mean, the the game trailers and everything have looked have looked gorgeous on this. I would rather that they delay it and not have an issue uh, like um, what was the, the Tom Clancy thing, the the division. Like yeah. I'd rather not have a situation like the division uh, or um, many other games that come out and they're nowhere near polished. They're yeah. nowhere near how they should have been. Um, so I, I'm I'm disappointed, but I'm okay with this. Yeah, I mean, like like we always talk about when it comes to delays, it's like, hey, you know, we'll, we'll play it when it's ready, and please don't release it before then. <laughs> don't so. don't release it before then because it's just it's bad for everyone. You've yeah. invested a lot of money. You've 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 invested a ton of money in something, and you want the most for your return, and. Unfortunately, when you delay, you're adding more to that budget. You're having to pay programmers long to, to, to work longer on it. Yeah. So, unfortunately, it does extend the budget. But if you come out with a game... We're in the internet age. You come out with a game now, and it's buggy and broken. If you are not a... If you're not Bethesda, then... <laughs> then people immediately will trash your game. Look what happened with Mass Effect. Yeah. The game came out, it had problems, it was buggy, and people went, okay, no, I'm skipping it. No thanks. Yeah, no thanks. I, I'll skip it. Uh, either, like, I'm on the fence, I'm on the, okay, well, maybe, like, this Christmas or something, I may get it. But I've got so many games to play right now, I don't know if that'll even happen. Yep. And then uh, other people I've talked to are like, no, I'm just not playing it. Like, it does not appeal to me. Like, yeah. Mass and, Effect and 3 put a bad taste in my mouth, and this is even worse. Yeah, and, and this was, this was I thought, possibly my, my entry point to the series. I was like, okay, I'm going to go for it. Yeah. But, like you said, like, when you when you release a game, and it if it, if and when it doesn't work, yeah. that doesn't, that's not good. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're for delays yeah. in, in furthering of, of the product. Yeah. And we feel like that that's probably what's happening. Yeah, I, I, I still say Mass Effect 2 should be your first in the series. Okay. Because Mass Effect 1, the gameplay isn't quite there, but Mass Effect 2, they, they knew not enough people played Mass Effect 1. Right, but uh, from what I've heard, they took out a lot of like RPG elements that were in Mass Effect 1, and the shooting was and the mechanics were a lot of the issue with Mass Effect 1. Since I'm planning on, if and when I yeah. ever play them, playing them on the, hey, watch a story. Yeah. But... Mass Effect 1 doesn't have as peaceful of a hey watch a story mode okay but the story is supposed to be the, better the story is pretty good but I don't know I like the I like the story too like okay. I really I like the story See, too this is, this is this is all like purely hypothetical sure. because they still won't release it on PS4 yeah they need to release a collection yeah and they, I, I, yeah. I don't understand why that hasn't happened they, they need to release a collection um, even if they released a Mass Effect 1 and 2 like yeah. if they just released that people will buy it. A lot of people will buy it. And a lot of people like me would be confused as to why you had a trilogy and only released two of them. Because three sucks. <laughs> Plus, they're still making... Well, they're not making money out there. Isn't three is on PS4, isn't it? No. No, it's not. Never mind. I thought it was. No, it's it's an entire trilogy on a single console yeah. and hasn't been updated. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's it's, it's I'm weird. still okay with them just releasing one and two. Because I'm not going to play three again. So... One and two are amazing, and I like the um, the companion missions for two because you have to gather. It's the it's the old school like, hey, gather gather a team. They're all different people, but we all got to work together. And you gather them, and then they all have completely optional companion missions where it's like, yeah. hey, I really want to find my brother or whatever it is. Yeah. You go off and those and those those missions were those are great and they they add a lot of impact to, they add a lot of impact to the story they actually do affect the outcome at the end as well so it makes you want to to go through those right uh, especially for, for, for the ones that the ones that you care about at least yeah I mean I, I always happens. I tried to keep everybody but, <laughs> you know that's that's Aww, me I'm, that's sweet I'm I'm just that kind of guy um so 
Speaking of nothing that had anything to do with that, uh, well, apparently see, we, 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 we missed a segue because it, it could have been the trilogy, yeah. and then Andromeda was four, and then we could have gone for four ah. to either Fortnite uh -huh. or releasing four days ahead. So Fortnite <laughs> is, is a game that's being that's being uh, released by Gearbox, mm -hmm. and um, they're doing something we've never seen before. Yeah. Um, they're, they're releasing the physical edition of this game four days ahead of the digital one and i don't get it i i don't it's, understand. it's it's just weird i mean it it doesn't make sense to do this other than uh if which which obviously this is the only game that we've seen this for the only thing i could think of was like maybe like a retail push like but like as in retail was saying hey uh you know we want exclusivity or whatever but this it doesn't have anything to do with that i mean if if it was a game like like Madden uh, or or anything like that, I think that um, I think that it would matter more. But this is yeah. a this is a property that that hardly anyone knows about. I mean, I I, I feel like it's kind of a it, it I, I feel like it's a gimmick. Yeah, like they they want to see you know if they can if they can get a little bit more publicity with this and and okay cool it's it's an interesting but it's gimmick. Just, yeah. it's just it's just weird it's it's an interesting gimmick yeah. uh which i i don't understand um because as a game that that i it wasn't even on the fence about i mean i was looking i i barely noticed there was a fence at that point like yeah. it's like should i even buy this should i even care and now i'm just confused yeah. like Having a digital before physical makes logical sense because you've already got the product ready or whatever mm -hmm. um, before you burn discs. But having it, it's backwards. It's backwards. <laughs> we don't get it. Randy, tell us what you, what what's going on, on that because I'm a little confused and maybe it's a little maybe your your idea didn't quite convey on that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're welcome to come on the show. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we hang will on. absolutely host that. Yeah. We will. Um, so speaking of releases, though. Uh, so, on the 15th of August and the 29th of August, respectively, mm -hmm. um, Project Skyline and Pillars of Eternity are coming to console. Yes. I have heard amazing things from people who, who are, like, really into RPGs yes. uh, as far as Pillars of Eternity. Project Skyline was supposed to be, like, SimCity, basically. Basically. Um, but, yeah, Pillar, Pillars of Eternity is, is supposed to be, like, a Baldur's Gate level, yeah. or... Baldur's Gate quality yes. adventure. Yes. And it really sounds amazing. I'm definitely going to check this out because I, I, I love me some dungeon crawling. It's it's dungeon crawling and the scale of of the, the dungeons as well as, as, as what you're fighting. Um, something about that isometric view, as you saw, mm -hmm. like, the, like the dragons and everything on there, there's something amazing about that where... If you're playing Skyrim or, or any others, and a, and a giant dragon comes down, you're just like, okay, giant dragon. But if you're this tiny and the dragon is taking yeah. up half of the screen, S scale, scale works much better in it, that environment. Yeah, it, it, it gives you a huge. Uh, I mean, it's like uh, like old school Diablo when yeah. you when you fi end up find like finally finding Diablo and he's he's massive. Yeah, like. It's you, something you, simple about that that that's that that your brain immediately latches to. Yeah, and it's 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 a good communicative structure, and it's. It, I like I like party RPGs. Yeah. And and this this is this is definitely one of those, and and it received high praise on on PC, mm -hmm. but because I don't play on PC, sure. I was like, well, I guess I missed that one. So I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited to see this coming. It's it's good, and I think this is this is a great example of. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little late, but. But a PC game that got enough, um, yeah, especially especially this one, like kind of going from the ground up, from nothing to yeah. to, to being a hit and getting um, getting on a console, which I think is important because a lot of people play on console, uh, and a lot of a lot of the younger generation plays on console, and a lot of people that I would consider a little bit more casual or people who they don't want they want to have fun and play video games, they don't want to work and upkeep and build a PC. Yeah, so. I think I think it's great. It's coming here. Uh, one thing that I don't think is great though is Sega Forever. Yeah, this this is this is uh, old Sega Genesis games yeah. being ported to mobile, and uh, so I I tried I tried Altered Beast, which is still a bad game regardless of where you play it, <laughs> and then I tried uh, Sonic. Yeah, and Sonic is I, I I basically wanted to see if that kind of twitch. Mm -hmm. 
quick reaction kind of kind of gameplay quick, yeah. works on on a on just a touch screen. Yeah. And no. Yeah. Like if if you okay, if you have like a Bluetooth controller or something, maybe this is, would be more appealing to you, but it's it's just not worth it. I think it'd be more appealing. There's still slight delay uh, when it comes to, to Bluetooth. Uh, when you have the yeah. older games, um, if you're playing something, I mean, I'm not I'm not the best at like the at the old school like retro games, but mm-hmm. like Punch Out. If you're playing Punch Out, yeah, that would that would not work. Yeah, it wouldn't work. I think Sonic would would work a little bit easier. There's a little bit more uh, leeway to it. Well, and there's also um, like once you once you kind of get the feel for the timing, if you've played it before and you already know these levels, you know when to jump, you know when to to crouch, when to do all those things. Um, the other thing that was that was interesting mm-hmm. was uh, the pervasiveness yeah. of the ads yeah because you can you can buy it for a dollar99 or you could see you can see an ad uh, when you when you start the game when you go to the main menu screen when you start the level and then after each level which you're beating them in less than a minute and the ads are 30 seconds long so roughly a third of your time is spent watching ads that's too much and Nah. I mean, give me an ad. I mean, if it was t- to me, if it was an ad before every level or so, that wouldn't be too bad. As long as it's not beginning the level, end of the level, start up. It's they're they're just all over the place. They really, really want you to buy. And I hate thir- I hate thirty second. I hate thirty second ads that I can't skip. Yeah. Because if it's a product that there's no way that I'm interested in. Then I'm gonna skip it. Well, it also it also has the Hulu thing, is in that it's just showing you the same ad and like, oh, no, I didn't buy it three levels ago. I'm still not interested yeah. in this giant mech thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, Hulu bothers it's, me it's, with that it's because just weird. it's the same. Yeah, it's the same TV show or whatever that they're gonna promote. And if you're watching, if you're binge watching on Hulu, mm-hmm. then like we were watching, um, was it Last Man on Earth and a couple others and. And you know, you watch an episode, you're watching that ad like three or four times, and then if you're watching four episodes, you're watching that ad sixteen times. Yeah, yeah. Give me some variety. I don't care how nope. much they paid you. <laughs> I'm not paying them. I'm not giving them any money now. Uh, yeah. I, I think that uh, we talked about the the Sega um, uh, console that's coming out. The uh, which I think Sega's answer to to Nintendo, the Sega. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the retro whatever retro thing. So that is going to have games built in as well as car- cartridge support. Mm-hmm. I suggest just picking up one of those. Yeah, I mean, if definitely. you're wanting to play want to play these type of games, pick up one of those. Or, I mean, the only problem is if you pick up like a like an old school one, you got to figure out how to hook it up to your TV. Some TVs don't have the hookups anymore, so yeah, um, yeah, it's easier. It's easier just to go with something like that, or get yourself a RetroPie. Uh, RetroPie, you can have all these games on them, and and it's easier. Yeah. Um, the legality of that is um, the legality of having a RetroPie is not a big deal, but make sure you own the cartridge. Yes, please do that. That's my suggestion to you. Um, <laughs> but uh, so Overwatch. Um, speaking of things that you need to think about. Um, speaking we're, we're speaking of tired. companies handling their audience well. Yeah. Too tired. To think this is players. actually a, a better thing because yes. um, Overwatch and Hearthstone both yes are actually uh, they've said look we understand that you're getting a lot of a lot of duplicates in whenever you're trying to uh, trying to just you know play the game yeah and they're like so yeah how about it, how about how about if we just let you let you <laughs> have this stuff and so you'll be getting duplicates less often and when it comes time to uh, to you know, when you do get some duplicates, yeah. then uh, those are going to be less often. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be less often, but you're also getting more. You're getting more money for it. Yeah, and I think that's so. great because in Hearthstone, like I'm, you're not getting. You get duplicates, and when you get duplicates, like the to uh, disenchant, because like, you basically disenchant and destroy the cards, and then get. Um, a, a dust currency that then you can make cards out of, mm-hmm. and the exchange is to me it's pretty low. And I'm someone who plays like probably five to ten games of Hearthstone a day, like to get all my daily quests and everything. And it's still 
you know, it still doesn't have enough if you want to play it and you don't want to pay for pay for packs. It's not quite enough to to keep up in the. It's it's not quite enough to be anywhere near up in the meta. I mean, I'm not even yeah. talking about getting like. Um, I'm not even talking about like getting the rarest stuff, but if it's like, oh, there's a new archetype that's coming out. I don't have half the cards, and the set's been out for two months. And yeah. I got people who message me on like who message me on Hearthstone that I know because you can you can go you can click and go oh they're playing a game I want to watch their game mm -hmm. like immediately and I'll have people who who start watching and they're like dude when did you make this deck like is this like one of your first <laughs> decks like hey it works okay <laughs> like I'm playing with stuff that's that's mostly in the I mean some of the new stuff but it's not enough. It's, it's not enough to keep up unless you're putting a ton of money into it. Yeah. And I don't want to throw... I did that with Magic the Gathering. Yeah. And um, if I'm going to if I'm gonna do that, I'm going to move back to Magic the Gathering. I'm going to throw money at something like that. So move back to Magic the Gathering. Like that, Magic is, the Gathering. That, is, that is the official <laughs> Twitch recommendation. I do like Magic the Gathering. But but yeah, so if you if you had been playing Hearthstone and you got frustrated with, with too many duplicates, yeah. or if... Um, the main thing for me on on the Overwatch stuff is this makes me more likely to jump in whenever they're they're having a special mm -hmm. event because like um, there were a couple of the dances that I wanted, but I knew that I would be sitting there playing. I, I would need to put in probably eight to ten mm -hmm. hours to get a dance or two. Yeah, and, and you don't know which one you're gonna get. And exactly. Yeah, so it's that's it's good to uh, to be able to adjust like that yeah um so uh, there's a game that's that's coming out we were talking about sea of thieves uh, when it came to xbox and everything but there's another mm -hmm. game coming out skull of bones that not as many people know about in my opinion right well i mean they they this just got announced during e3 so this is last week's news yeah um but what what it is is uh, a lot of people really enjoyed the uh the ship to ship combat in in uh, black flag mm -hmm. And so Ubisoft was like, okay, well, we're, we're taking a year off from Assassin's Creed. What if we did just that? Yes. And so, I mean, you, you can go around and do that. I'm, and which, the, other cool, the other cool thing, yeah. the, the news that we got this week that's, uh, you know, we, we, like I said, we announced this, we talked about this mm -hmm. uh, with the E3 stuff, but, uh, but they're also giving us a single-player campaign. Yes. You know how we love single-player campaigns. <laughs> So yeah, if that's pretty is, exciting. Yeah. Um, my only question is, do I still get to collect sea shanties? Because driving <laughs> around the sea and singing with my mates. Yes. That sounded like a lot of fun. It, the it's, only thing it is, is with with Skull and Bones, you can't load yourself into a cannon and shoot yourself at the opposing ship. No, you. So can't. I think Sea of Thieves wins. So on that one. I think Sea of Thieves wins uh, for the. I want to go have fun and. More than likely, people are just going to get drunk and play this on Twitch. Okay. Apparently, something you can do in-game is get, get drunk, drunk yes. in-game until you start throwing up. <laughs> and you and somebody somebody I was watching, like uh, they were using that as their uh, as their attack. So like they boarded <laughs> the other ship and started throwing up on all of the all of the funny. people and like clouding their screens and, and yeah. Well, I mean, that would definitely distract. I mean, he said he said he was clouding their screens. I have no idea if that's what actually happened, but he was like just <laughs> hurl, hurling vomit everywhere, and I was amused. I mean, as irritating as it is in a, in a game when a character reacts to something and it and it, and it delays you, yeah. like a stun, if you will, yeah. that would stun me. I'm like, I, I'm gonna battle be... you. Well, you. You puked on my shoes. <laughs> like yeah. that would that would stop me, especially if you're one of those like really posh pirates. Like indeed, yeah. Posh Which, posh pirates, posh pirates have problems with puke. Yes. I wonder if on the spot. I wonder if posh pirates is a punk band. They should be. They should be a punk band. If you have a punk band and you have not come up with a name <laughs> yet, you're welcome. Posh pirates. Posh pirates. Uh, so out out of the blue, or quasi out of the blue, because there's a rumor about this, um, we got some news that Atari is working on a console. <laughs> yeah, and um, it's and, and it's not a retro console. It's not a, a, a apparently, it's not a uh, all in one. Here's fifty games uh, on a thing uh, console. It's apparently PC architecture. Uh, I don't understand. I don't. I don't. So, so the 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 rule has been, mm -hmm. I mean, basically since like uh, the eight bit era, a couple years after Nintendo, mm -hmm. Sega comes along, and then there was uh, 
Oh, what was the computer one? The I, I there, there was there was another system that yeah. was kind of going along with it, mm-hmm. and Atari had upgraded to the seventy two hundred mm-hmm. or something. But basically, for the most part, the console market has supported two and a half consoles. <laughs> so like, yeah. there's there's two that are doing all right, yep. and then there's one that survives. Yeah. And you know, Sega dropped out, and then Xbox or Microsoft stepped in. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know who really has a has a really intense desire to work with Atari and put games out on their system because like they're 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 chasing they're chasing Microsoft they're chasing Sony they're chasing the Switch and I I just don't know who's like yes I want to port my game somewhere else also that's that's again that's what I don't understand either there's with um, right now you have. Sony and and Microsoft, who arguably have a very similar architecture and console, mm-hmm. they're they're both PC architecture. It's not as different as the 360 and PS3. Yeah. Um, you have difference in exclusives. You obviously have the PS4 and the Scorpio that that and, and that bit, but but by design, you have two very similar consoles uh, that are competing for between fanboys and exclusives. This is really what we're what we're gnashing at here yeah. uh, and some some in regards to media media player is a big thing now um, and then you have the Switch that's doing something completely different how does Atari how, what from a business perspective who is your who's your demographic who's your demographic and what are you looking at in the landscape and going you know what they're not doing this. this yeah because that's what Nintendo did Nintendo Nintendo had a huge hit with the Wii a ridiculous mm-hmm. hit with the Wii the Wii U was a flop yeah. For a lot of reasons, but they looked at the market and they went, "Hey, our handheld market's doing really well. Mm-hmm. We still have a bunch of people who want to play our games. What if you could hook up a a really good handheld to your TV?" Yeah, and they they came up they came up with an idea mm-hmm. that nobody else was doing. No one's doing that. And and they they marketed and and designed something based on that, yeah. and then they did it. Yeah, they and I don't I just don't see I I need. Obviously, we're, we're we're early in on this, but I would love to hear, as much as I don't like hearing business jargon, <laughs> I would love to hear the rationale. The rationale of this is the environment. This is what this is what's lacking. This is what we're offering. This is what Atari brings to the table. Yeah. Because you have to tell me how your console, which is PC architecture, like similar to Xbox and PS4, according to, to sources and according to the CEO, how is that different and how is that going to be better than buying an Xbox? How is that going to be better than buying Sony, buying a, a PlayStation? I don't know. How is that better than just building PC? Maybe we'll have better answers to these questions later. <laughs> For right now, it's just kind of a... a, a... Wait, what? What just happened? Type piece of news. So let us and know. we like to bring you those. Oh, yeah. So let us know in the comments what, what you think is going on at Atari, uh, what they could be bringing to the table that's lacking in our current uh, video game environment. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll talk to you guys about it later. You know the part at the end of, I think it was like Toy Story 2 or 3 or something, where, where the Barbie's like, Fly! Yeah. Fly! <laughs> <sighs> Basically. <I agree. laughs>